and then I will start sharing my screen and then we will get rolling. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sure can, thank you. Great, all right. Hi everybody, um, thank you for joining the Jenkins online meetup. This meetup is about Jenkins in Google Summer of Code 2020. So on this channel, we aim to conduct regular online webinars about all things Jenkins. If you have a Jenkins story, tips and tricks, we love to have you speak about it here. So just drop us a note in the Gitter channel there. And um, we look forward to hearing your stories. Some housekeeping notes before we begin. Please put your questions in the chat window. One of our speakers will respond to your question throughout the presentation. This session is being recorded. We will share the link on the meetup page later today. And if you, we can't get to your question or you have questions after the session, feel free to drop a note um, or your questions in the Gitter or the community, community discourse channel and we will respond to it there. The Jenkins Code of Conduct is fully enforced here. If you're not sure what it is, it's simply being kind and respecting each other. On the agenda today, we will start with covering introduction to uh, GSOC and then GSOC's uh, Jenkins in GSOC. We, we will go over project ideas, timeline, project idea presentations by potential mentors and Q&A to close out. So this event is hosted by Jenkins GSOC org admins. This year's org admins are Jean-Marc, Chris, and myself. So what is Google Summer of Code? Google Summer of Code is a global online program focused at introducing new contributors into the open source software development space. GSOC participants work with an open source organization on a 12 plus week programming project under the guidance of mentors. This year will be GSOC's 17th year in operation. The program has connected 18,000 new open source contributors from 112 countries with 17,000 mentors. Google Summer of Code has produced an impressive total amount of 40 million lines of code for 746 open source organizations. So Jenkins first began participating in GSOC in 2016. This year will be Jenkins' sixth year participating in the program. We currently have 10 potential mentors with eight project ideas at various difficulty levels. Project ideas can be found in the link there. And if you're interested, previous year's projects can be found in um, this link below. Our goal is to provide a positive and enjoyable experience for both GSOC contributors and mentors. The work for these projects will provide a sense of challenge yet a rewarding learning experience for, for both mentors and participants. We intentionally keep our project um, numbers between five and seven as we want to focus on the quality of the experience rather than the quantity. We work very closely as a community. We do weekly office hours, organize meetups, events, and we stay in close contact via chat and community discourse. The project types that we offer are key initiatives to Jenkins goals, such as configuration as code, plugin improvements, and Jenkins pipeline, just to name a few. So these projects actually do yield a high value to the community in general. So what this means is that your contributions are benefited by Jenkins users as a whole. So Jean-Marc. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. So first, uh, this gives you an idea of what the projects were that were selected last year. 
and that uh, reached a successful uh, end. I'm not going to explain them because uh, today because we have a lot of uh, uh, other topics that we want to and explain the current uh, projects. Have a look to uh, the history, so the uh, the archives, browse through it, get ideas, look uh, how they were uh, conducted there. Before going to the next slide, I just want to um, explain just to be sure that everyone understood it. What we call office hours is that we have a, a, a meeting every week at a regular cadence where it's just open for at least half an hour and where you just come and uh, either we have some organized topics there, but at least this is the watering hole where you can come to ask questions and, and see what's, what's going on, where you have an interactive way uh, of uh, dealing. And we, we have them uh, flipping uh, a time, uh, time zones. So we have one that's more oriented for Asia and the other one more uh, Europe, Asia, uh, uh, Europe, Middle East, and uh, uh, Africa uh, time zone. Next slide. Sorry for the, <laughs> the explanation, but I, I thought it was important. In the beginning, I didn't know what an office hour was. So uh, here, these are some pictures of uh, last year's uh, or uh, previous year's um, uh, experiences. One of the things uh, 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 that I find very great is that um, the successful uh, 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 contributors get invited to uh, uh, the annual DevOps, uh, DevOps World Conference and have a chance to present their, their project to the community and interact with, uh, with a lot of people. And, and well, this is an interesting reward. And the picture below is, I think, I'm uh, not sure of that. I think this was one of the, the reunion of the various uh, candidates. Uh, at the Google uh, uh, campus. I'm not sure at all that this will take place, uh, will take place again. Okay, can move to the other one. Um, I think you can I, continue. Yeah, or, I no. can cover this one. So as mentioned earlier, uh, we do stay very close contact throughout this program. Uh, we've set up a dedicated communication channels like GSOC Discourse, GSOC Gitter, GSOC Weekly Office Hours, like Jean-Marc mentioned earlier. Uh, these channels are quite active, so feel free to pop in anytime and ask your questions there. All right, so how to apply. So if you go to this link here, it's um, go all the way up. So this site is really helpful in walking you through the application process um, and setting correct expectations before the, the, the program and actually for the entire program itself. It contains a lot of helpful links to all things Jenkins and GSOC, tips and important information to keep in mind during the program. Uh, one thing that we want to call out is this project proposal template. The purpose of the template is to discuss your ideas with the community um, early to solicit feedback from potential mentors so they, they can help strengthen your proposal before you apply. Uh, this template is just a suggestion, so you're welcome to use your own template. We also recommend that you don't wait until April to start working on your application. Start writing your proposal much sooner. So again, to solicit feedback um, and encourage potential mentors to help you make a, a better proposal for yourself, uh, for, for Google. Okay. And then... Um, there, what's important and then when when yeah. you when you apply, choose a Jenkins uh, project. Yeah, that's what it should look like. Yes. And now Jean-Marc will go over the project ideas. Yes. So, um, well, you can have a look to the uh, to the URL that's that's there. Uh, maybe if uh, Alyssa, you can click on the link. 
just so that we, we see it. Yeah. So just browsing through it, you will see that there are three categories uh, of projects. Uh, and let's go back to the presentation. So we have the overview uh, there. So the, the first and more mature uh, project is the approved one. That means that a project has been fully qualified, is, is defined and ready to fly. Draft projects, uh, it's still ongoing. There's some discussion and refinement going, uh, going on. These projects, and there's currently only one uh, uh, there, they're fine to apply. So you can uh, uh, start already preparing uh, your apl application for these kind. Projects under discussions, there are currently two uh, in that. Uh, there are still discussions going on on scope, feasibility, um, and, and you're, you're, you're uh, invited to join the discussion if you have uh, 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 ideas, but be cautious because we, we, didn't have, we don't have uh, mentors for them for sure or uh, it's still underway. Uh, so listen carefully if you're interested to uh, a, a project under, under discussion. So you can move to the next slide, Lisa. So uh, just emphasizing what is the GSOC uh, timeline. Um, first step that you need to do is carefully look at what are the eligibility requirements for e application it would be uh, it would be a very sorry uh, a story if you do all the work and then realize at the end that uh, you you're not entitled uh, for for it read the the specification carefully uh, there it has been a little bit changed as it was uh, uh, mentioned earlier so uh, read it carefully um Start writing early. Uh, well, most of you have been in higher education, so they know the earlier you start, the better chances uh, your chances are to reach a successful and quality end. So don't wait the last day to, to do. And um, submit draft proposal, make them uh, available to the community. Uh, publish them via Gitter or Discourse. So, so the, how you do that, you create a Google document, you prepare it, and then you say, here, this is the first iteration on my draft. Could someone have a look to it, make comments and so. Now, this is something important in one, and you'll, you'll discover many other differences, uh, one of the, the, the things that makes working on open source different than what you used to do at, uh, at university or uh, others, where generally you, you keep the work for yourself, you're working on your own. Here, everything is open. Uh, you share it. There is cross pollinization Even people can take some of your ideas. It's part of these these this uh, uh, the, of the process to have these ideas flowing and move and and one builds on on the other. So don't be afraid of it. And saying afraid is, I know it takes some courage to put a work that's not exactly at your quality standard openly in the world and say, what are people going to think? No, and particularly uh, uh, well, the Jenkins community and we as org admin and, and the mentors uh, have the same attitude. Uh, we're there to help and we're a friendly community and don't be afraid, don't be shy. We're here to work together uh, to make uh, this experience successful. So don't be shy, don't be afraid to, uh, to share that discussing and reviewing a document openly is part of the experience, is part of working on open source and one of the things we would like to share uh, with you. You can start submitting uh, your application. So the goal for you is uh, on April 4, uh, 
uh, April 4 is the moment where you will start uh, filling in the, the, the form. And normally, if I remember well, I think it's on, on the next uh, page. April 19 is a moment where the door closes. Your target now is uh, April uh, 4. Have a look to the timeline. So I, I've seen a lot of questions. How do we start? We're eager, you're, you're like horses ready to start the, 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 the race. Um, start as soon as possible. Understand the subject that you're interested in. Explore it. Get uh, acquainted and, exp and uh, get practical experience on Jenkins, on the ecosystem, how the community works. Get familiar also with the pull request methodology and how all this works. This is the, the very good time to get these muscles flexed and um, uh, to, to get experience in that. By doing that exercise, interacting with people, getting ideas, you will build up the knowledge in order uh, to, to do a powerful uh, submission uh, for that. So we can move to the so, next slide. Uh, if there are questions, Mark, you will have to. Yeah, John, Mark, are, are you okay if I pop in with questions? Sure, sure. So, so is it okay if a, a, a potential contributor, so a candidate, um, works on something that's unrelated to any project idea just as a way to get experience? Is that okay? Or are they expected to work only on project ideas? Uh, I, I think, well, this is a, a very good question. Um, so I, I, the, the, the short answer is yes. So it's a good idea to have experience that you, you have the global holistic picture of how everything is, uh, is together. Uh, jumping too quickly, very deep into the subject well, might make you miss the global picture. Uh, it really depends on what is your experience with the tool. If you just heard about it and, and had one demo, uh, a quick demo, uh, it's very important that you have a good understanding of the various components, that you see how it looks like, how you work uh, uh, with it. So at least you should install your own Jenkins instance somewhere on, on the laptop or, or whatever, configure it and uh, have a pipeline for a, a regular build. So build one of your projects on it. So this would be the, the, the default uh, a path for getting acquainted. Then have a look globally for simple, or what's the name for it? Not newcomer, but uh, entry level issues. And so you, 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 you learn it and, and even just a, a uh, a documentation update or something like that. But there you have the practical experience of what it is, uh, the, the Git voodoo that's required uh, in order to submit a, a pull request, uh, to have it reviewed, and then it's merged so that you at least made a few times the complete circuit. Okay, so if you get oh. the, the, last, the last thing I want to, if you get stuck, if you don't know, you don't know what I'm talking about or what are the these concepts, come to the, the office hours, ask your questions. You have the asynchronous ways of, of using the various communication channels we are. Don't stay stuck, stuck shy in your corner and, and well, I don't know how to do that and, and try to find it myself. Ask for help. We're together uh, in this adventure. Mark, you thank, wanted to thanks say? Thanks very much, John Mark. That was that was perfect. <laughs> Onward. Thank you very much. Okay, so you just stopped me in my 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 flow. If there are other questions, the question was was uh, was very good. So just what happens afterwards? So so you know your goal now is April four. You start filling in the application. Uh, the end of the application is April nineteen. The uh, mentors in org admin for Jenkins are then going to select in the various um, uh, applications uh, who will join 
the next step of the uh, the adventure and the contributors will be announced uh, on May 20 uh, at that day. So once we reach that, then, well, okay, we rejoice. And I, I okay, sorry for the people uh, that were not selected and uh, there will be other opportunities. Uh, the next step is that we, we're going to start what's called the community bonding period. It means that uh, you will then get into contact and build the relationship with your mentors and you're going to say, oh, how, how is this going to work? How? So there, there will be quite some, some meetings and uh, uh, discussions uh, so that you, you get warmed up. And the actual coding is, is starting on June 30. And what happens afterwards and how it's organized, you will hear from your mentors and we'll do other sessions uh, to, to coach you there. An important thing is, uh, I'm not sure in the submission, I don't think that there is a question there, but generally uh, don't forget to state and discuss uh, what are your availabilities during the summer. Uh, I, I would recommend adding it to the submission form as a, as a note, uh, meaning that if you have um, uh, obligations during your summer, if you still have uh, end of term papers to write or, or, or you're going to get married or whatever important things uh, where you will not be able to focus as you would like on, on this, uh, let us know so that we can we can eventually organize and see that the, that the mentors are available or I'm not waiting for you while you're away. So, so we need to organize uh, uh, this, this period. And um, it's okay to say that, well, no, uh, I, I have a work for university to do and, and uh, I prefer to, uh, to stop. You're still welcome, at least as, as uh, contributors to uh, our project and, and there will be uh, other coaching, but well, Google Summer of Code is an important, uh, an important thing. So let's move to the project presentations. Uh, so this is an overview of the, pro the projects we're going to uh, present uh, uh, today. Uh, and we're going to walk uh, through each one with uh, the main mentor uh, doing the, the presentation of his project. So the first one is uh, Chris. So your turn. Okay, uh, so the first project I'm gonna talk about is uh, automatic Git cache maintenance. Um, the goal is to review the features available from a relatively recent feature from Git called Git maintenance and identify ways that the Jenkins controller could use these features or implement some similar features to manage cached copies of Git repositories. So what this does is one, to run tasks to optimize Git repository data. So that, that's our priority. The second is speed up all commands in Git. And third, to use storage requirements for repository. So it's three pronged. Some potential features to add. The first one, uh, I put a star there because it's some, like the most important feature. Register, strategy schedules include GC, commit graph, prefetch, lose objects, incremental repack. And um, for like more details, you can go like to the link above later. And uh, the second feature we can add is run, third, start, fourth, stop, fifth, unregister. Skills to study or improve for this project would be uh, Java and Git, and the project difficulty is intermediate. All right, I'll cover this one. So um, this Jenkins is incredibly powerful, and there's a lot of really cool things you can do for it. But one of the struggles that we've had is making sure that all these really interesting things are documented. So this this project works on kind of creating that central documentation resource for being able to access the Jenkins REST endpoints. 
So this is um, kind of modeled after what we do right now on the website. If you ever go to Jenkins IO and look at the pipeline steps that are available on that page, and we will be talking about that in a later <laughs> later a project idea you could see that all the things are displayed there so we this project is kind of doing the same for our different rest endpoints also if you um, install a jenkins you could, there's actually a link and you can see what rest points are available within your specific instance of jenkins but the problem is it's a lot of text and so we need to also be able to display that using uh standards so that's swagger or open api 3 and so the the, this project is being able to come up like with that, being able to do that automatic generation, um, expose what's available, and then potentially maybe even make that available within Jenkins itself. So um, this is going to be an independent tool, not a Jenkins plugin, but there could also maybe if we, if depending on your scope, to make changes to Jenkins itself. So you might have to look at core. Um, so a lot of it is going to be looking at Swagger, the web, looking at how we publish our website stuff. And I think that this is kind of maybe a advanced beginner intermediate project because it, if especially if we're going to core, but the independent tool I think is something that can be written by somebody fairly easily. So. Okay, so uh, back to me. Um, uh, this project, Jenkins file runner action for GitHub Actions, it's um, it's not entirely new because like previously we have had a POC project uh, that bears a similar name uh, from three years ago. And the goal of this project is to use a new tool called Jenkins file runner to implement a new complete feature versions of uh, what we have had before, uh, which is a project on GitHub. So you can see POC link below. The skills to study or improve are Java, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins File Runner, Docker, Git Actions, Configuration, and points to note. So uh, it has been done before, so uh, it won't be like a start from scratch project, uh, which is like a starting point. And uh, to run the strength of a new incubating project, Jenkins File Runner. So um, more, to find out more, you can follow the link there. And uh, three, get to be acquainted with Docker and GitHub Actions configurations, which it's a good like uh, asset to gain. And four, exposure to basic DevOps concepts. And the project difficulty for uh, this idea is intermediate. Right back again. So similar how I was talking earlier, we do, if you go to the Jenkins IO site, you can actually see this really amazing list of all the different steps that are available through pipeline. However, some of those steps are a little bit confusing to read because the way that we generate this is we basically have like a headlet or like a, a Jenkins list plugin manager. And it just is using exactly what's coming from the source code itself. But sometimes that's not exactly the best to be able to read on, like for a human. So what this is supposed to do is you're supposed to go and kind of do the research to figure out maybe how we want to display this information on the page rather than just kind of barfing some things up and then have a chance to uh, improve the layout. So there is some like writing that will be um, available here. It's not 100% code, but there is some thinking about how things should look on like to be able to help with documentation and also kind of um, maybe potentially even making those changes to code themselves. So this is working with the tool that we already have in place and making some improvements to that. So it's kind of beginner, a beginner type project. And the plugin installation manager tool improvements project idea is taking a project, a project that was actually a Google Summer of Code 2019 project and that is widely used now throughout Jenkins uh, to manage plugins configuration as code. So I specify precise versions of plugins I want and the plugin installation manager tool goes and retrieves them for me, brings them down and installs them. This project idea is that we encourage you as you're considering proposing a, a plan for this project idea that you look at the open issues, review which things could use improvement, where are the places where users have had difficulties, what has caused them struggles or challenges review the existing documentation, looking for things that are commonly done, review chat sessions or Reddit sessions or community.jenkins.io looking for common questions so that you can then use that to shape your project plan. 
with your selection of improvements and your implementation plan for those improvements. So this one is as much about design and definition as it is about implementation. Is this your mark or? Oh, oh yes, that's right. Sorry, I should keep talking. Or I, I can also. <laughs> no, no, thanks, John Mark. Thank you for the reminder. Yes, so, so in the Jenkins ecosystem, we have Jenkins Core. And Jenkins Core provides a, a, a platform on which one or many plugins are installed. Those plugins provide the key capabilities. And that means over the course of the 15 years that Jenkins has been under development, there have been many plugins developed. There are over 1,800 available plugins from open, the open source community right now. And the number of plugins continues to grow. However, for maintainers and for users, they aren't always sure about the condition of a particular plugin. Is it well maintained? Is it actively maintained? How many people are using it? What's their success or failure rate using it? Those kinds of questions. And this project idea suggests that we would like to have a Google Summer of Code contributor join us in helping to create a plugin health scoring system so that maintainers can see which things are important for them to be doing in order to show that their plugin is well maintained. It also will help users as they say which plugins are better maintained and which may not be as well maintained so they can bias their choices towards plugins that are well maintained and will give them a good experience. Now, this is a multi-component project, and there are phases in this project where we, we know we've got to collect the data. With 1,800 plugins, there's a lot of data to collect. We need to aggregate the data and combine it in useful ways. Um, that will require some data storage, some consideration of how do we store the data. Then we need to present it, and we have at least two different audiences that need to see the presentation. The maintainers, who have one set of needs, and the users who may have quite a different set of needs. So collection, aggregation, presentation, and data delivery, all part of this project idea. John Mark, was there something, before we go on to that one, John Mark, was there something else you wanted to highlight on plugin health scoring? Uh, no, besides that this is a project that I'm very fond of. So <laughs> I've been dreaming of that for, for some time. Um, the, it, it's it's not a one man story or one lady's uh, story. Um, th there are subcomponents uh, in that, and and so uh, the the you don't need to to tackle the whole. There's several stories uh, in there. There's uh, and in the description you can have a few hints. Uh, uh, this is just a summary. Uh, for for it so uh, uh, the prototyping uh, uh, just uh, this is why we highlighted these components components are typically one thing uh, where where people can work quite separately so love to see that oh that's that's my turn too so well this is another project that comes from my my previous years uh, as Jenkins admin or or working uh, with that. So Jenkins configuration as code is a very neat uh, feature that allows to configure Jenkins based on a YAML description. And so uh, this is also the preferred way when you want to work uh, the GitOps way uh, to configure Jenkins. We don't like mouses. End, end of the joke. The problem is that in certain circumstances, you want to allow the end user to modify the, 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 the configuration manually because you need to do a test in production or you want to give uh, experimentation freedom to your team. So there are reasons where you change the configuration manually. But that means that the, the configuration as code uh, will drift from the actual one. And um, so we want uh, to have a tool or we, we need a tool that will identify that the configurations are not in sync anymore 
and that if we apply the original one, we're going to lose uh, manual con uh, configurations. So it's going to work a little bit like the Terraform plan feature that's going to say before, well, if I apply the original configuration, this and this and this is going to change. And Terraform then says, do you want to continue? Uh, we want to uh, identify clearly what are the elements that were manually created or changed or reconfigured so that we have a clear identification uh, of that, be able to generate uh, delta descriptions so because there you can eventually automate and include uh, uh, automatically include the, the drift into uh, the original configuration and merge it. And uh, the other thing is, is just simply uh, saying the configuration changed. It's not, uh, not equivalent to the original plan, uh, to the original uh, configuration. So, whoops, you need to stop. Somebody changed uh, it. And so there are different policies that you can put in place. So it's it's a um, useful and interesting tool. Um, there, there are different ways to implement it. So it's currently under discussion. So it's it's living mainly in my brain. I see how it like to uh, to see it working. <laughs> well, many things happening in my brain, honestly. But uh, I I see how it like it. But it's not defined yet. So I, I there, there's different ways. So if somebody chooses that that project, uh, there, there would be an uh, an important functional description part and say how could this work? What would be the how would the user or or an admin use the tool? So there there's an interesting creativity part uh, in implementing uh, that. It should be usable uh, in in the pipeline. Uh, or within the user interface. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, project. Now I'm selling it again, but uh, I could have used such a tool in my, my previous uh, uh, life and on my current Jenkins environment. So this is for that, uh, that presentation. I think we are entering the Q&A part. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, during during the presentation, before we jump to the to the question, there were several interesting questions that were asked and uh, answered online for the record, and so that people that will uh, listen to the recording, I'm going to uh, repeat the questions. So uh, one question was, uh, can we apply to more than one project idea within a single proposal. So the first part is, yes, you can apply to multiple projects, but the answer to the second part of the question is no. So you need to have a separate applica application for each project. So you have uh, one application per project. So I believe John Mark, I, th I think I may have interpreted the question differently than you interpreted. You okay if I if I spin my answer to the question? So yeah, go ahead. I thought what the what the person was asking is, could I create submit a proposal which combines multiple project ideas into a single proposal as my proposal? And I think that would be allowed. Uh, okay. I would be yeah. I would be a little surprised to, because to merge to yeah, merge I, would, ideas? I was thinking, oh, okay. gee, I'd be surprised if multiple project ideas wouldn't be much bigger than the time would allow in the three months that we have for Google Summer of Code. But I, I think it, it would be a valid proposal to say, yes, I think this idea and this idea in combination might be a better story for some reason. So, but but it would still be the candidate's single proposal. Their proposal is here's my proposal, and their proposal could be potentially a combination of ideas, but but it's ultimately, it's the, the candidate's proposal. They're not just parroting bats back someone else's idea. Right. Well, yeah, that, that this is a very interesting um, uh, uh, lighting. I don't know the English word for that, but another way to, to answer uh, the question. I hope we answered the question in some way correctly. 
So please uh, let us know if uh, this was not correctly answered. The um, other question, uh, and there were several replies to it, was can experienced professionals also participate to GSOC? Uh, if yes, could it be all right to work over weekends only? I'm really interested, but new to GSOC and willing to contribute. So uh, after some trials, because my experience uh, is, is, this comes from the new rules, um, uh, Chris uh, rightly said that experienced professionals uh, are allowed if they're new to open source, because one of the goals of Google Summer of Code is to teach the ways of open source and to encourage people to uh, participate to open source uh, communities. So it is allowed and uh, an anonymous uh, attendee uh, very kindly pointed out to the exact uh, documentation within the, the, the rules um, there and um, beginning of 2022, we're opening the program up to all newcomers of open source. So, it's a broader uh, definition. I invite you to um, uh, to uh, uh, read exactly the eligibility criteria. And Chris said, as long as you're new to open source and satisfy the other eligibility criteria, you can apply. No, no, and I think there's something interesting hiding in Chris's answer. Chris, I believe you were actually a Google Summer of Code participant twice, right? Yeah. So you were you were in the second time still considered new enough to open source to qualify. So new to open source sounds seems like it's relatively flexible, right? You you really worked on two different years on Google Summer of Code as a student. Uh, I think they changed the rules because like before you can participate more than one time. Like they they still allow you to if you have done it. Like I think in twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. Uh huh. I see. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. I just, I was so impressed that you were willing to be a mentor this year and that you've been a, a student two years previously. That, that's, that's a, quite an, a great thing. Thanks for being a mentor. You're welcome. Okay. I'm not going to repeat all the conversation in the QA. The summary of, of that is that if you're new to open source uh, and a professional, you can apply. Please read the rules from uh, Google. Uh, for uh, for the details uh, and the other questions was there and uh, I think I covered the questions that were asked uh, initially so so there was there was one more John Mark and oh, it was the number of hours uh, well the the question was oh, yeah, yeah. experienced professional contribute if they don't have 30 to 40 hours a week to give to the project, which people who are in a full-time job typically do not. And I think the, the question was, can how many hours is expected of someone who's selected to participate in Google Summer of Code? And in, in the earlier sessions in 2020, 2019, et cetera, they expected 30 to 40 hours a week. But my understanding was with COVID-19 in 2021, and now in 2022, they've cut that number in half so that, so that if you're disrupted for this reason or that reason, you can still be successful in Google Summer of Code if you can, on general, commit 15 to 20 hours a week to the project over the course of this, the three months. Right. Okay, uh, interesting topic and, and lesson is I, I need to read and remember the, the details more uh, in, uh, in detail. Uh, can, I, can I kind of actually like take us back to kind of the question that we answered or had before? Um, so I kind of also want to throw out like the idea of like, if you have your own idea, that is amazing. And we'd really like, these are just ideas that we have for you. Um, if you have your own idea, that's wonderful. One thing I do suggest is trying to get that proposal written as quickly, like as soon as possible to be able to get it out. So we can try to help you find mentors um, that maybe be even beyond the people on this call, like at the outside to be kind of able to help guide you through. But the, if you have your ideas, no problem submitting them, just kind of do it early and we'll try to be able to pair you up with somebody that 
might know more about that, the area you're concerned about. But yeah, I just I want to highlight that. Very this excited is, to hear ideas. So yeah, yeah, but this is this is very very true, and and uh, yeah, uh, I forgot to, to to mention that uh, any idea is open, and this is a principle of open source. Whoever comes with an idea, just put it on the table, and we're going to see if we can build something around or get people get traction and get people yeah. uh, on it. So uh, very good that you emphasize that, Chris. Are there other questions? So don't hesitate to um, put them in the QA uh, window. So don't forget, uh, we have the, uh, oh, there, there is a question. How competitive is Jenkins G-Shock according to previous year's application? It's a bloodbath. No, I'm joking. What? <laughs> what? No, you did, but how, <laughs> how competitive <laughs> is? No, no, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I see a, a, a Roman chariot race with people flying all over the place. No, no. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask people that were part of the selection process of, of last year that don't take so, too seriously what I said. Mark. So last year, as, as I was reviewing proposals, I think we received five or six proposals in the, the, the area that I was mentoring. And we were therefore comparing five or six. That was not 500 or 600. That was five or six. It wasn't one, but it was, it was not hundreds. So does that give you an indication of the competitiveness at some level? Yes. Uh, each year will be different. The previous year, uh, I think I reviewed actually far fewer uh, applications for the, the topic I was mentoring. So it depends on the number of people applying is to decide how competitive or non-competitive it is. And honestly, sometimes too, it's the actual project as well. Like I've seen some where the pro there's maybe three proposals for the same project and then maybe one idea only has like one proposal. So it just kind of also depends on that too. I just want to encourage if you think that something is quote unquote popular, um, not to try to put out your ideas, but just as kind of a another aside. Well, and, and Christian's point on popularity, many times the reason a project idea is popular is because the community is interested in it. Right, and that that makes us more likely to select it. So, yes, very true. So there's a very there's true. an element of hey, this well, it's a great story to tell. Here you are, a brand new contributor to an open source project, and the thing you contributed to in 30 days after its deployment, after its implementation, was deployed to 80,000 installations. Right. Open source has a great story to tell for you making a difference for people very broadly, very quickly. And so, so that, that's a fun part of this exercise is you could, by making a, a valuable contribution through Google Summer of Code, be very quickly in many places throughout the world. Good. There was a question uh, asked and Chris uh, answered to it, but for the, re the people watching the recording, I would like just to uh, repeat it. So there was a question about how is time devoted quantified uh, as in somebody may require some time to do research, so would that be accounted? Uh, Chris, do you want to either repeat your answer or add more color to it for the audience? Um, okay, sure. So I think like for the project, the time like counted towards at everything you do for the project. So research wise, research, any research done, any, any like, things you need to check on uh, for documentation or read up on documentation or study like someone else's repo or code uh, would be counted towards the time spent on the project as well. Okay. That's my and and uh, don't run too far away, Chris, because you answered the other one. And so should we look out for ideas that have been least applied for having a higher chance of success? So can you repeat your answer, Chris? 
Okay, sure. So I think we are uh, well, for anyone interested, they can potentially apply to more than one project idea based on like what uh, Google allow us to do before. Uh, so, uh, but I think the most important thing to consider when applying for a project is a good fit. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Chris, I, I missed the last, um, I missed that last phrase that you said. Could you say that again for me? Um, if it's a good fit. You should oh, a good fit. It's a good Thank fit. You. Got it. Good okay. fit. Yeah. Sorry, I had an and, audio problem. There. Yeah. And the other advice I'd, I'd give is, is take particular care in preparing a, a good proposal and th think of the people that are going to read it. So uh, by writing your proposal, you're talking to people that you're trying to convince and try to make it to be as, as uh, precise, correct, creative, convincing uh, in, in uh, what you do. What do you say? Then uh, there is another question here. Oh, is uh, how competitive is Jenkins GSOC according to previous year's application? I think we answered that one. Did I miss that? No, I think we. No, no, that. we addressed that one. We addressed yeah. that one. Right. Okay. So I click on done. Other questions or doubts that we can clarify? Don't forget if you have other questions while you sleep on it and, and rehash what has been said here. Uh, we have uh, the various uh, asynchronous communication channels, the Gitter channel, Discord, so community at Jenkins.io, uh, and uh, the office hour sessions that we that we organize where you can come back uh, uh, to your to your questions, so still a couple of so minutes. John, to go. John Mark, I'd propose to be even more precise. Tomorrow, John Mark will be hosting office hours. About it's about twenty-one hours from now, right? Roughly so uh, look on the Jenkins calendar. Is it twenty hours from now? So office hours are coming, and they're coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it will be the Africa, Europe, and the Middle East uh, session that I'll be. Uh, I'll be hosting. So well, you're very good at calculating the hour difference, Mark. <laughs> After that. Okay. Any other questions for today? Melissa or it. Mark, yeah. yes, I think we can slowly conclude. Does somebody from the panel want to add uh, something? Just want to say that I'm I'm eager and uh, excited to have you on board, interested and looking forward to start this adventure, this summer adventure together, and build something interesting. So looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. and so on this slide here, um, it's some useful information or links to help you get your questions answered. And if you know you don't find what you need, just reach us out um, via Gitter. We're very active there. So um, throw us your questions there. And if there's no other questions, um, I guess we would just want to thank you for your interest in Jenkins GSOC. We look forward to receiving your proposals. Yeah. Recording will be available within the next 24 hours for your review as if you need to see it separately. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.